In this clip we will talk about p-values. As you will remember, p-values are an alternative to using critical values in the context of deciding whether you should reject or not reject a uh, null hypothesis in a statistical test. In one way, p-values are more easy than using critical values as the decision rule is always the same. So we'll do this in a regression framework. Let's consider you have a hypothesis test. And the decision rule will always be when you use p-values, reject H0 of that hypothesis test if the p-value is smaller than alpha. So what is that alpha? We use that also to get critical value. Well, it's important to remember that this alpha is really the probability of a type 1 error. And a type 1 error, or the probability of a type 1 error, is the probability of rejecting a correct null hypothesis. So using p-values, you when you use p-values, you still need to set this alpha. Right? So you can't get away with not using alpha. alpha. You need an alpha. And that often we set that to 5%, but you may have reasons to reduce the probability of a type 1 error. You may want that much smaller, for instance, 1% or even a tenth of a percent. So let's say you performed a t-test. And the hypothesis for the t-test was as follows. Beta i, that may be a coefficient in a regression, is equal to 0.7. That's a null hypothesis. And the alternative is that beta i is, say, smaller than 0.7. So here we have a one-tailed test. So really the null hypothesis you could consider that beta i is larger or equal than 0.7, but it's exactly the same as setting beta i being equal to 0.7. And let's assume that the calculated test statistic, wherever that comes from, I just give you a value here, is negative 2.563. As we said before, we need an alpha. Let's set that alpha to 1%. So alpha is equal to 0 0.01. So the question is now, how do we calculate the p-value? Now what we need to do that is we need to know what the distribution of the test statistic under the null hypothesis is. Now for a t-test in a regression framework, given certain assumptions, the classical regression assumptions, we know that this is t-distributed with, say, 30 degrees of freedom. I just give that degree of freedom parameter here. And that's the distribution of the test statistic if h0 is true. So we need that information. That's at the, the core of all calculations for p-value. So let's draw a little picture. Here is our t-distribution, our stylized t-distribution. And we know this is centered around zero, and our calculated test statistic is somewhere here, negative 2.563. Now, graphically, the p-value in this particular case is this little area to the left of negative 2.563. Okay. We know the area underneath the entire distribution is 1, and it's to the left because our alternative is smaller than 0 0.7. It's a left tail test. So the p-value is equivalent to the size of that area. Uh, it will have to be larger than 0 and smaller than 1. That's trivial, but the question is how big is it? And then is it larger or smaller than alpha, which we set here to 1%. Next, it is important to understand how to interpret that p-value. So graphically, it is the probability that we get a t-statistic if that distribution is true the probability that we get a t-statistic smaller or equal to negative 2.563. Now it's important to understand what that means in the context of our null hypothesis. This distribution is valid if the null hypothesis is true. So therefore we can say if h0 was true then we would expect a value of the t-statistic of negative 2.563 or smaller with the probability of the p-value. So this is very, very important. The important thing here is if H0 was true. So remember, also we want to compare that to the alpha, which is a 
probability if H0 is true. So that p value is now going to be the probability that we get a test statistic that is at least as extreme as extreme or more extreme as the actual test statistic which we get if H0 is true. So we have a data test statistic that's here our negative 2.563 and the p-value is the probability that we if H0 was true that we would get such a test statistic or one which is more extreme and we will compare that against the probability of the type 1 error which is sort of our threshold we want to set ourselves. So let's do a little test. We have a null hypothesis, gamma 3 is smaller or equal than 0 0.3 and an alternative gamma 3 is larger than 0 0.3. Which of the following are correct decision rules? Option A. Reject H0 if the p-value is larger than alpha, our significance level. B. Reject H0 if the t-test is larger than the appropriate critical value. C. Reject H0 if the absolute value of the t-test is larger than the critical value. D. Reject HA if p-value is smaller than alpha. And E. Reject H0 if the p-value is smaller than alpha. There can be several correct answers. So you can pause and think. So what about solution A? It's incorrect because we said we would reject the null if the p-value was smaller than alpha. So that's incorrect. In fact, the correct decision rule we can find at the bottom, E, that is exactly the correct decision rule. Now let's look at D. It's the same, just that it says reject HA, but that's not how hypothesis tests work. We reject or don't reject H0. So that is an incorrect decision rule. What about B and C? They actually use comparisons of test statistics and critical values. Let's look at the alternative hypothesis. It's a one-sided right-tail test. D, C treats the test as a two-sided, so that's incorrect. B, that is correct. the correct decision rule. So the next task is to find out how to calculate the p-value. As this is a t-distribution with 30 degrees of freedom, we need to go to the table for the t-distribution. So here I have uh, statistical tables. They are like in Wooldridge, and they are the ones you'll get in the exam. So we need to go to k, 30 degrees of freedom. So what's relevant for us, let's just move this a little bit uh, around. So you see the uh, headings, one-tailed and two-tailed. So we are now interested in one-tailed. Okay? And we know, these are all positive values, but we know the t-stat is uh, symmetric, so we will get the same values on the negative side. So negative 2.563 is somewhere between these two values, okay, 2.457 and 2.7. Negative 2.457, um, negative 2.457, now what probability would this cut off? That would cut off a 1% probability. Okay, So the area in the tail to the left of negative 2.5457 would be 1%. And then we have another value, negative 2.75. Let's say that's here. Negative 2.75. That cuts off a probability of half a percent. So what does that mean for the p-val? Here the p-val got to be larger than 0 0.005, but smaller than 0 0.01, okay? Because this area here to the left of this cuts off half a percent. The area to the left of this cuts off 1%. Our p-value is in between these two values. So the p-value got to be so our p-value is uh, so like one. So it's between one percent and half a percent. Now, as we set an alpha of one percent, we therefore decide reject H naught. Okay. So and as a 
just repetition, what is this probability of the p-value, the probability of getting a test statistic as extreme as this or more extreme if the null hypothesis was true. So now, what is the p-value not? Okay, the p-value, okay, so that's important that we understand that. It can't be this because if you if you look up to our formal definition of what the p-value was here, the probability that we get a particular t-test or more extreme given h0 is true. So it's part of our conditioning statement that the null hypothesis is true. So we can't, you know, assume that the null hypothesis is true and then get a probability and say, well, that's the probability that h0 is true. We've already assumed it is true. If you don't assume that h0 is true, you can't get the p-value. Okay, so this was for a one-sided test. Now, briefly, what would we do if our null hypothesis here had been, uh, the alternative had been beta i is unequal to 0.7. Then again, we have to consider, you know, remember what we said, what's the probability to get a test statistic of this or smaller, perhaps I should have said instead of smaller or extreme or more extreme. That's especially important in the two-sided test. Now, more extreme would mean smaller than negative 2.563 for the two-sided test or indeed larger than 2.563. So if you have a two-sided test statistic, you're really not only looking on one tail, but we are looking into both tails because we want to know what's the probability of getting a test statistic, the particular value we got, or more extreme. And more extreme includes the other tail as well. So now we basically ha would have to add the red and the green probability. Now, of course, we know they are exactly the same. So once you have that probability to get the p-value for two-sided test, you just have to multiply it with two. Okay. In the t-table, this is sort of done quite conveniently because you have a second information up here. What's the probability for a two-tail test? So that means in a two-tail test, our value was between these two values. These two values for a two-tail test give us uh, alphas of 1% and 2%. So that means in a two-tail test, our p-value would have been between 1 and 2%. So that means what we've done here using uh, the tables, you can get a p-value only into a range. Okay, certainly with the t-table. Uh, how could you get precise p-values? Well, for that we have to use some other information. One way of doing that is to use Excel. Okay, so you could use Excel, write down our test statistic. We need the degrees of freedom. And now you use a function in Excel, and you just need to know it. We need some t-distribution functions. You could actually go, let's go to statistical. If you go to t, there's a number of functions with respect to t. Uh, so, for instance, what, what we need is t-dist. Okay? In t-dist, you need to enter your test statistic. That's the x, the degrees of freedom. And you need to know, are you interested in the cumulative or uh, or the density function. We're interested in the cumulative function. We don't want the height of the density function, we want areas. So click OK. And what we get is 0.007817. And that is indeed, as we've already established, somewhere between half a percent and one percent. Okay, so that's the left hand tail. This function gives you the left hand tail. Let's say you had a um, positive, a right hand tail test, and your test statistic had been plus 2.563, we know due to the uh, symmetry of a t distribution, we should get exactly the same um, t, a p value. What you get from that function now is 0.99218. And you need to remember that this function gives you the area all the way from negative infinity to the value which you entered. So if for right hand, for right tail test, the p value will be one 
minus all that area. So we would have to then calculate 1 minus that value, and we get exactly the same result, 0.007817. So you always need to, you know, need to be quite uh, alert. So, and in uh, in Excel, there are all sorts of um, you know, these functions. So, for instance, for the chi-square distribution, you can get exactly the same function to calculate precise p-values. But of course, in an exam, you couldn't do that. So that's the p-value. Let me just sketch what. Uh, all this would look like if we had a chi-square test. That's very similar to an F test. Uh, so let's say we have a chi-square test. So for instance, an LM test for autocorrelation. Let's say. So again, we can sketch like this the chi-square distribution. Uh, again, remember. The distribute so this is chi square distributed with k degrees of freedom if h naught is true. So if we have a particular value, let's say 5.678, as all LM tests, all chi square tests are right tailed. Okay, and that means what we are after is this area. This area is going to be our p value. Again, let's see of how we can use a table, so we need a chi-square table, it's an f table, chi-square table, we set three degrees of freedom, we are here, in this row our test statistic is 5.678, so 5.678 is to the left of the critical value for 10%, that means our p-value has to be larger than 10%, okay, so the p-value in this case, is larger than 10%. And that's all we can say. And now, um, for instance, even if we had an alpha of 10%, we cannot reach H0. In an autocorrelation test, H0 would be in the absence of autocorrelation, but works for any chi-square test exactly the same. So again, what's this? Uh, that, that is 0 0.678, 0 0.678, Again, I've just made up that value. Um, so we want the chi squared distribution. We have that value, that degree of freedom. We want the cumulative one, we put a 1 in. We got 0 0.871, but remember what this value is 0 0.8716. 0 0.8716. Seven one six. This is the area of this. This is the size of this area. So our p-value is actually going to be one point eight four percent. So if the null hypothesis was true, there would be an almost thirteen percent probability of getting a test statistic at least as extreme as the one we got. Okay. So and therefore. He cannot be checked H not. So here's another test. I want you to calculate p values and I want you to use statistical tables, not Excel. In the end, that's what you will have to use in an exam. So, problem A let there be a t test with a value of 2.1. Let's say that t test is t distributed with 15 degrees of freedom, and the alternative is that the estimated or that the coefficient is larger than something. We don't need to specify more. Specify more. It's just that the alternative is larger than something. Problem two or B, we have a chi-square test statistic that takes a value of 10.23 and that should be distributed as chi-squared with four degrees of freedom. So what I want you to figure out is the p-values for these two tests. And as you're using statistical tables, you will only be able to determine a range. So we want to find out the p-value is larger than a certain value and smaller than a certain value for problems A and for problems B. So what are the answers? First, we start with the t-test, and I'll copy the t-table here. The test statistic is 2.1. The distribution is a t15, i.e. 15 
degrees of freedom. So we're here, we're looking at this row, and we'll find that the test statistic is between these two values. Now it's a larger right-tailed test, so we are really looking at the one-tailed probabilities. So our p-value will be between these two values, between 0 0.025 and 0 0.05. What about the second, the chi-square? test. We have a chi-square 4 distribution. Test statistic is 10.23. So let's go to the chi-square distribution. I copied it here. That was the test statistic. We said we had 4 degrees of freedom, so we have to look at the values in here. And we only have one probability values because chi-square tests are always one-tailed, always right-tailed. And our test statistic is between these two values. Okay, And therefore the p-value is going to be between these two, 0 0.05 and 0 0.01. So the solutions here are p-value is larger than 1% and smaller than 